In my previous video I built this blower and in the video before the previous video I built this wooden bucket for my small dust collector. And in this video I'm gonna make the theme baffle separator. It starts with a piece of nice 12mm birch plywood. I cut out a square and drilled a hole in the middle which allows me to use it as a pivot point on my bandsaw circle jig. The inside diameter of the separator has to be slightly smaller than the inside diameter of the bucket, which is about 36 centimeters. So I set the according radius on the jig and cut out another circle. The outer ring will be used later. The cyclone wall is gonna be made out of clear PET plastic. Here marking and cutting it to length with a straight edge and a utility knife. Now that it's cut to length, I can try to fit it in the groove. So far so good. To mount this thin plastic onto the wood, I made a mark every 5cm on one side and drilled holes there. Then I fastened it with one screw on the disc, wrapped the other end around and while holding it under tension, I put in another screw. Alright, so far I only put in a few screws because I have to take it apart again anyways. But what I can already see is that the plastic is a little bit too long. It overlaps here by just a little bit. And that's because I put this plastic under a lot of tension. So now I have to cut off a thin slice again. Now it has the right length. Before I go any further with the assembly, I first have to make this hole in which this piece of pipe can fit into. I could just cut this hole out with the scroll saw or jigsaw, but I came up with a better solution. So I cut out the majority with the scroll saw and then I made this template here with my CNC and this hole is the perfect shape for this pipe. Now I'm just gonna line it up with the hole and then I'm gonna use a flush trim bit and finish the hole. Really snug fit. Now if you don't have access to a CNC and make a template like this, you could just cut it out close to the line and then sand until the pipe fits and that would also do the trick. Now to attach this ring on the bottom of the baffle, I made this wooden disc that has the exact same size as the other disc. So it fits in here. Then I can take this whole thing and put it inside the ring. Then I push down this disc. And now I can put a band clamp around this ring. Now when I tighten the band clamp this will close the slot here and the ring will tighten against the wall. Okay that was the theory, now I just have to do the same thing again, this time with epoxy around the edge. I roughened up the glue area with sandpaper to give the epoxy something to hold onto, because on just a smooth plastic it won't stick as you can see here. This is a slow set epoxy with about one hour of open time. Once all the glue is applied, I remove the wedge and tighten the band clamp firmly. Now the slow set epoxy I used needs about 6 hours to fully cure but I just let it dry overnight. So in the meantime I can make the inlet shoot. The core piece of the inlet is this round to rectangular duct transition. You can find one of these in pretty much any hardware store. I chose a 4 inch inlet even though this will be just a small dust collector and not a big dust collection unit like this one. But my thought behind this was that even this small dust collection unit can handle a bigger tool like a table saw with a 4 inch port. And if you don't need a 4 inch port you can easily put an adapter on it and use a smaller hose. So then I made a housing in which this pipe piece can fit into. 
It's a really simple glued screws construction. But once the glue set, after 10 to 20 minutes, I removed the screws and drilled the holes larger to insert some dowels, which then really give the structure some stability. Time passed, glue dried and wood has been shaped. Okay, now I can pull out this disc. And there it is. Now I have to mount the inlet chute onto the baffle. And to do that I need to cut it into this round shape. To cut the shape I use my circle jig on the bandsaw and I set the radius to the exact same radius of the baffle. And from my 3D drawing I know where the cut needs to start and end. Now I just need to mount this piece on this OSB disc so I can spin it through the blade. And a final check before cutting. This end looks good. And this end also looks good. The key thing for this to work is a really sharp blade that doesn't drift away from the cut. Because cutting birch plywood vertically is really hard work. A not sharp enough blade will drift away once you enter or exit the vertical cuts. So this is straight from the bandsaw. Let's see how it fits. Pretty good already. I only have to refine the shape a little bit right here. And after a little bit of sanding I have a really decent fit. I'm going to mount the inlet chute directly over the seam because it's not really strong. And I hope that the round shape of the inlet chute kind of reinforces it. And when it's mounted and I cut out all these parts here then most of the weak spot parts are removed. So now I just hold it there and mark where it is. Okay, now with this shape I can mark all the screw hole locations. And drill them. Drilling them was quite easy, but countersinking not so much. I had to hold a block of wood to the other side. I then attached it with two screws which hold it in place so I could pre-drill for the other screws. The holes are all pre-drilled, but before I attach it fully, I need to cut the hole and the best tool for this, I think, is one of these multi-tools. And I again roughened up this surface for the epoxy. And with an even coat of glue, I then put in all the screws. Alright, the inlet is now mounted really solid, next I need to flush trim all this overhang. Unfortunately, there is no good way to do this. A sharp chisel and patience are required, but I took my time with this to make the transition as smooth as possible. And while I was doing that, I let the CNC cut out the baffle. It's not necessary to use a CNC for that, and a paper template would work just as good. One question always is where to position the slot. And I position it so that this center here is right at the end of the inlet. And from experience with my other thin baffle, I know that this will work out pretty good. Three, two, one, go! Easy. Next thing to mount is this piece. But the question is how? When I designed this, I never thought about how I actually attach this piece to the inlet. So I thought about the various solutions, for example screwing it from the inside or gluing it in place. But then I noticed that there would be a really simple solution. So only two tiny screws wedged in between the wood and the plastic hold it in place really well and I can also replace this piece if I ever need to. Last piece missing is the pipe in the middle. And there it is. But I'm still not sure if these really thin walls can handle the vacuum from the blower, so let's find out.
Okay, so finally I sanded everything and coated the inside surfaces as well as some of the outside surfaces with polyurethane to protect them from moisture and make them nice and smooth. And now before we put it back together and test it, I had an idea. Because this thing also functions as a really nice head, doesn't it? Really? What? I can't take this guy seriously. Come on! Okay, don't yell at me. For some heavy testing, I have a big pile of sawdust. And there it's working. As I have no filters attached yet, I wore my respirator. Here's the view inside the bucket. So as you just could see, the separator works pretty good, although it's not perfect, because sometimes it couldn't separate the really fine dust and it was sucked up by the blower. But that only happened when I tried to suck up really much at once, which in my opinion isn't really a real world use, but more of a stress test. Because a separator like this one works with centrifugal force, so the airstream that comes in here spins around really fast in this chamber. And centrifugal force pushes the dust to the outside, away from the airstream of the blower. And through gravity it drops through the slot into the bucket. Now if you suck up too much dust at once, a lot of dust particles have to be accelerated at once, which restricts the airflow, so the whole airstream is slower. And when the airstream comes in slower into the chamber, it also spins slower, which means less centrifugal force that pushes the particles to the outside. Bigger and heavier dust particles like wood chips aren't really affected by that, because therefore the centrifugal force is still strong enough. But for example, sanding dust, which is really, really light, that's more of a problem, because the suction of the blower tries to pull the dust to the inside and suck it up. And the centrifugal force pushes it to the outside, away from this airstream. But if the centrifugal force is too low and the suction is harder, then this fine dust gets sucked up. So what I'm trying to say is that a separator built like this with no calculations done at all has its performance limits. Because everything matters, the size of this pipe, the size of the chamber, the height of the chamber, the size of the inlet, the power of the blower, everything matters. So if you calculate everything, it could perform much better. But with no calculation done at all, you will hit some performance limits. I also tried this with my big dust collector with the filters removed. And when I sucked up too much at once, I got the same results. Fine dust was blown out. Okay, after this little bit of theory, I now set up a more real world situation. So I hooked it up to my table saw. So now I make a few cuts and have a look at the dust collection results. Separation looks good, no dust coming out of the blower. Cutting these strips from a small board produced about this amount of dust and the separation worked really well this time even though this is really fine dust because it's not too much and wasn't sucked up in about two seconds all at once which actually is a realistic usage of a small dust collector like this one. Alright, the next piece is added to the small dust collector. Next thing would be the filters and a mobile base which holds all the pieces together and makes it movable. But you guessed it, I will cover this in my next video. Okay, that's the theory. And I just have to repeat the same thing with epoxy around the air, around the edge. The whole weak spot parts are gone. Eh. I could just cut it out with I could just I could just cut it I could this I could just cut it out with the scroll saw or even jigsaw. Wow, straight line. The core piece for the... But my thought behind this was... 